Oh, oh shit! <laughs> Jason, man, go, go, press to someone else. Help! I'm running to you guys. I'm running to you guys. Open that window. Open that window. Open that window. Open that window. Open up. No. 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 Damn it. You're coming through, dude. Lock it. Lock it. Lock it. Lock. Don't open it. Lock it. That's not locking it. That's not locking it. Friday the 13th was made with an awareness and intent to replicate and visually portray the 80s era that the films and franchise was big in. Even the intro when you boot up the game is done in a dated VCR effect, which I think is quite cool because it reminds me of my childhood. The game does a really good job at establishing the world and era of Friday the 13th. Everything from the characters, their clothing and world, the game does a good job at encapsulating it and presenting it to the player. Honestly, it is a delightful throwback playing a game that takes place in that era. Even the tools you have at your disposal are from that time period. The design philosophy very much like Alien Isolation, which purposely went for a futuristic aesthetic that was imagined from people in the 80s, or what they thought futuristic tech would look like. Here, we see a manifestation of the 80s as it looked like in the films, mostly taking place in a really unsettling, hauntingly harrowing woods. Dude, don't go further down that road. Trust me, it's got bad news waiting all over it. You brought him here, didn't you? God damn you. Yep, that answers my question. The game is like a cat and mouse chase that is set in the fictional world of Jason Voorhees, the killer or villain. There are a team of counsellors that you can play, all coming with different strengths, weaknesses and stats, giving them different playstyles. You can customise their apparel and equip them with different buffs and perks, which you can also spend points to roll and get more of, like a loot box. Customization is also available for Jason in the event that you play him instead of a counsellor. Once the game gets up and running, it then becomes a race against time. Counselors must band together and scavenge until they have enough parts to coordinate and escape. There are several ways to escape, and you can of course try to scavenge for more than one way, as Jason can follow your escape plan by intervening or through your own incompetence. And let me just list a few examples here. Take Exhibit A for example, three people smart enough to get the car up and running, but it appears that the driver's having a panic attack behind the wheel or that they have simply forgotten how to use the controller. Or maybe this was just part of the game plan to just drive erratically like this. But uh, one of the survivors is desperately, desperately trying to get in the car. And it's just really difficult because the guy's just driving like this. And mind you, this is a, this is while they're getting chased. And <laughs> it's me. Well, like the other time, me and my buddy uh, got the two seater up and running. Time to get out of here. So, all is well. We start driving. Unfortunately, yeah, we can't pick her up. Because we, like I said, we just made a two seater. And then he pops up in front of us but she just decides to just drive right I, I don't understand why she would drive right no, like why why would you drive right into a tree I, I, I don't get it there was plenty of other space but in anyways I, I tried to be really clever and as he initiates the death cut scene I, I just try to get in quickly start the engine but then I realize after it's a whole cast bar it's, it's a whole cast bar well it was worth a shot well yeah um, but yeah just just silly moments like that really but they're, they're actually funny <laughs> That's probably two of the most easiest fucking kills we've had to do.
As said before, different characters have different stats, which means, for example, you have one character that is more stealthy and harder for Jason to detect, contrasted with one of the more athletic or handyman characters that do repairs or stun or crowd control Jason better. Composure affects how susceptible to fear a character is. The lower the composure, the more likely the character will stop or stumble over a pursuit, sight of death over a fellow player, or intervening acts like Jason cutting the power to a building, making the player's hiding spot pitch black. <laughs> and giving away the position of the counsellors. Equally, Jason has a set of abilities to assist him in hunting down counsellors. For balance purposes, the longer the game lasts, the more stronger Jason gets, making him more difficult to deal with, let alone escape from. The items have a random spawn, so you'll have to work with what you can find first, but the game does allow certain items to assist your scavenge, like a map which unlocks everything for you to see. The game does add a level of realism or horror into it by ensuring players can only hear each other when in the vicinity of each other. Hello, hello, hello. Counselors can employ a range of tactics and tools to slow Jason down, or alternatively they can hide. The game is extremely and disproportionately fun when you play as Jason. It does feel like you are too powerful, which can frustrate those players that are counsellors, but this can be managed by knowing what to do and doing it quickly. The idea is that you shouldn't wait too long as Jason gets stronger. Plus, if you wait the whole 20 minutes without getting killed, you win anyway. That being said, I have gotten a bit carried away playing Jason. I'm coming to get you! Let's get out of that house! Come here, you. Where do you think you're going? Please, no. Oh, son of a bitch. Please, no. <coughs> That's what you get. come up with really clever ways of putting down traps so like after I break down this door of um of one of the cabins and when which one of the guys is in I, I put a bear trap here and then I also put a bear trap on the side window and then I put a bear trap in front of the door that I'm about to break so basically every any escape that he does he's or he's gonna most certainly land into a bear trap and then you can see what happens the results are as predicted it's fun constantly pursuing and toying with your victims who continuously try to stop you or evade you but in most instances that's unsuccessful the game does have a progression and leveling system with some unlocks to keep the player busy with <laughs> However, the fun factor of this game is heavily contingent on who you play with. For example, a good team that is communicative or a group of friends will surely give you plenty of excitement and fun memorable moments. And word from the wise, just because you bump into more allies, do not automatically think that they will help you. Hi guys. Y'all yeah, didn't find any fox there. What the fuck are you doing? No! Stop! You can actually kill each other? Oh what the fuck? What the fuck? Don't fucking rescue him, he killed me! 
My whole life has been turned upside down. What, what, what is this shit? What's real? However, from my experience on the console, matches take too long to set up at times. The game is quite buggy still, and there needs to be a bit more balances and tweaks. More maps and game modes would also be nice, and some more cool looking unlocks would be great too. Oh, battery! I found it! I found a battery, guys! Despite its drawbacks, I keep playing this game over and over again because the game can get dynamic and the sequence of events unfold differently. The sound design and soundtrack was perfect, using much from the source films. The use of sound in the game guides the player and informs them of their situation. It also adds the emotional stress on the screen. When Jason is nearby, the music gets dreadfully scary and tense. When nothing is happening, it's quiet but eerie. Shit, shit. The light, the light. Oh, shit. Oh, he's there. Look at him. He's on the mini map. He's there. Oh, look. Fuck. That's going to be so gay if he sees me, dude. Uncool. Uncool. Get the fuck out of here. The Verdict. The game is a fun throwback to the 80s and Friday the 13th franchise. It has fun and dynamic gameplay, and the game stays true to the film in terms of audiovisual presentation, going so far as to have Harry Manfredini's score in the game. And if you're wondering who that is, that's the original composer of the film. The game is a bit buggy, but I can let them off the hook, so long as a fix is in the works. I mean, this is a Kickstarter project after all, and the creator was very nice to give the devs the license to do it. Currently, there is not much content, but providing the game does well, some single player stuff is said to be added, however its main selling point is the dynamic multiplayer. But that being said, the faults are still there. Sessions are too laggy, and my matches frequently get dropped out, and there's still quite a lot of bugs. And without items to, to assist you, uh, you are very, very vulnerable against Jason. Some people won't mind it, but just, to, just so you're aware, this is a actually what the developers intended so um it's not that they didn't see this it's it's they made the game that way so just a little heads up for those of you that might not like that final score is a solid 3.0 i would have given it a 3.5 if it weren't too buggy and laggy and my sessions weren't constantly getting dropped out i was joining sessions with really good players to only find out that um it just dropped for some inexplicable reason